for all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Welcome back. This is going to be part two of answering uh, logical atheist. Logical atheist, a recent critic of mine um, from a post that I made on this video here. If you check out the bottom of the screen here, it's Nova Science Now, uh, T Rex Blood. I had made a comment about a year ago. Um, saying that it was an awesome clip, I love it, Genesis 1-1 explains it all, where they go into the soft tissue that was found in a T-Rex thigh bone. And uh, in the last video, part one, that I did of this right here, this um, answering logical atheist, um, I showed uh, what she had found in that video. And so if you haven't seen that, um, please go and check that out. But um, after I'd made this comment here um, logical atheist had made um, a comment after I did about a year later saying that Genesis was pure fiction and from that point we began an exchange um, that nearly which raw Matt um, check out his channel um, along with uh, standing for truth he does video editing for that lots of good stuff lots of detailed go down deep stay down long type of information um, if you want to learn more along with debates and so there became there began a exchange between the three of us and uh, and it got quite heated and so to the point where I felt that this would be a great time um, to maybe put this in video form for maybe for others to see and so a lot of times people do comments and um, you know unless somebody actually takes makes it a point to click on and see more of the comments um, sometimes they never see things that others can learn from the exchange that people have and so I felt why not why not answer this guy in a video form that way other people can see this and so that's what I did and um, and so the last video we started on it and I'm gonna do a few more in this video and I think I'm gonna do one more video to kinda tie everything together um, with some of the uh, comments that he made and um, um, lastly towards the end where he really made a real attack on the Bible throughout all these comments there was there was just the same flavor um, of his um, arguments the Bible the flood nobody really cares that type of thing so I think in the last video we're gonna nail that last one about the attacks on the Bible um, and wanting the extraordinary evidence for the extraordinary claims and no one really caring so we're gonna nail that one um, and I'm gonna show you um, quite a bit of uh, scriptures um, to see to show you what the Bible has to say about people like logical atheists and so how do we answer them um, how what does the scriptures even have to say about these type of people and so uh, though I would hope that logical atheist um, would come to his senses and um, and accept the Lord as his Savior um, God would accept him um, he still has an opportunity while he's alive on this earth and so but we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that in the part three as I wind this up and so but he goes on to say um, on this next comment of his um, and this was directed at me if you notice right here in that red square it says um, there was never a world flood just local a local flood flood legends are just that legends none proven true not even Gilgamesh nothing in science supports a world flood especially when geology debunks it now this is a reoccurring thing that he does he say keep saying that science debunked it geology debunks it but when we ask for this information he does not provide it he or she does not provide it and so none of this we could not get him to um to really show where they debunk it you know where where's the proof and so, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that there are some flood 
um, stories around the world, whether you want to call them legends or not. And, um, and we're going to show that. We're going to show that there was a worldwide flood, and geology does support it. And so, but let's take a look at that. Before I go into the legends, for those of you that are not familiar with the story of the, um, or the biblical historical flood account, um, go into Genesis chapter 6 and start there and start reading and you'll get the background. Um, but in a nutshell, God commands Noah that uh, to build an ark. He tells him how big to make it. Um, he tells him why he's doing it. Um, and so, uh, and the main reason is because the world um, basically has just uh, turned upside down with violence and corrupted their ways on the earth, um, even to the point where the Lord mentions that um, the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. And so God has grace on Noah and his family, and he tells them how big to make the ark. He tells them what to bring in the ark as far as food, and then the, he has the animals come to Noah. And we're going to go through that. And so, but um, there was Noah, his wife, his three sons and their three wives. And so there was a total of eight people on the ark. It says eight souls were saved. And so now this right here is a map of all the different world legends, myths, however you want to say it. You know, I've really cringe to call it a myth, um, but I'm just going by what the information that I say it. This is what they, they call it. But it's really kind of funny when you look at this, it spans all over the globe. And if you look at the colored dots here, it tells you the red ones are most like the Bible. The blue ones are somewhat like the Bible. And the green ones are like the Bible. And so you got the red ones show, the red ones show God shows favor to the survivor. And the blue ones is the boat lands on a mountain. And the green ones is widespread destruction by water. And so this is all over the globe. More than just coincidence. More than just coincidence. Now in Hawaii, let's look at some, just a, just a few. Um, this is Hawaii's um, story about the flood. Long after the death of this person here, Kunuana, the first man, the world became a wicked, terrible place to live. There was one good man. His name was Nu'u. Sounds familiar, don't it? Noah Nu'u. Um, I think that's just a little bit more coincidental. He made a great canoe with a house on it and filled it with animals. The waters came up over all the earth and killed all the people. Only Nu'u and his family were saved. Now, logical atheist, let me say this. Why is that so close? Now, the thing that I've noticed about a lot of the critics is they want to nitpick every little thing. Well, he said it was a canoe, but there's no way you can put every animal. This is really getting nitpicky and ridiculous. We're talking about a flavor, the same flavor of what's happening in the story, the narrative, about the whole world being destroyed. Sometimes they throw in some exaggerated things, but you got the same flavor of what's going on. And so, again, this right here, easily. Nu'u, Noah, Nu'u, I mean, explain that one. One Chinese classic um, called The Hiking tells the story of Fu Hai from whom, from, see, whom the Chinese considered to be the father of their civilization. The story records that Fu Hai, his wife, three sons, and three daughters, sounds familiar, escaped a great flood. He and his family were the only people alive on the earth. Sounds interesting. After the great flood, they repopulated the world. Okay, explain that one. The Toltec Indians. Found in the histories of the Toltec Indians of ancient Mexico is a story of the first world that lasted 1,716 years and was destroyed by a great flood that covered even the highest mountains. Now, when you take at the names of the Bible and you line them all up and you uh, take the ages and when the flood happened um, the Toltec Indians is only off about 60 years from the biblical timeline a little more than coincidental I think 
the story tells of a few men who escaped the destruction in that word right there, which means a closed chest, a closed chest. Following the great flood, these men began to multiply and build a very high zukali, zukali, or a great tower to provide a safe place in the world where, um, if the world were destroyed again. However, the languages became confused. So different, so different language groups um, wandered the, uh, to other parts of the world. Now, that sounds extremely close to what the Bible has to say. Um, when you got that closed chest, we're talking a basic long rectangular box is what the ark looked like. Um, though there are a little bit of fanciful interpretations, even among some creationists, they still got that same type of flavor, a long boat, a long chest-like boat. And then after the ark rested, then you have um, the Tower of Babel, which right here they have a, a great tower to provide a safe place. But of course in Babel, everybody came together and that's where um, the Lord told them to disperse and repopulate the world. Well, they all came together, and of course, um, some began uh, worshiping other gods and stuff like that. And so the Lord came down and confused the languages. And that's where all the different languages on the planet um, started off, was in the Tower of Babel. And right here, these people have the exact same story. The languages became confused. So that's when everybody started dispersing. And what are you going to do? You're going to stay with those people that you can communicate with. And then they went off to different parts of the world. Um, and so right here. So different language groups wandered to other parts of the world. And so, again, you got that same flavor. Explain it to me. There's your answer. You want it. The Grand Canyon Flood Tales. Um, the Halupe Indians, people of the tall pines, have an ancient have ancient pictographs with a flood story. Here it is. First picture pictograph depicts rains fell on the earth for 45 days. The rising waters wiped out all the peoples, with the lone exception of an old man atop Spirit Mountain. The Creator eventually sent a bird to the man with instruction to dig with a ram's horn into the foot of the mountain to enable the waters to drain. The man obeyed and soon the bird returned a second time with grass in its beak to inform the man that the waters had receded. Okay, there's some other things that's been added to this, um, but you still got that same flavor. Um, now Noah sent a dove out and the dove came back with a piece of an olive branch and that's when he knew that the waters had abated. Okay, it says a second pictograph depicts a vessel carrying eight passengers across the water. So here you go. Now the family's in here. Whom, for, from whom all the peoples of the earth were descended. There you go. You got the same storyline. The Havasupai Indians... Um, people of the blue-green waters, the medicine man prepared a hollow log for a young girl, animals and provisions to provide to survive a great flood. The rains came and the hollow log floated on the water many days. The flood waters covered the whole earth, killing all the people. The log eventually came to rest at Grand Canyon, and this young girl became the mother of all people. Okay, so the Bible does state that um, it was in the mountains of Ararat, the area of the mountains of Ararat. Here they're saying the Grand Canyon. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, again, you stories cause sometimes can be fanciful and exaggerated, but you still got that same flavor of what happened. And so, uh, again, um, it's very well, you, you, you just can't, you can't, miss this <laughs> anybody that knows anything about the story of the bible is going to pick up on this and so um again this is not showing a local flood as um logical atheists has um has stated you can see where all the white dots is these are massive fossil graveyards i mean massive massive fossil graveyards some of them um have reported estimating having up to up to over a billion animals, a billion, that's with a B, a billion animals um, fossilized in these areas. Um, that one with the bit with the billion, I believe, is in the Karoo Formation um, in Africa. And so we're talking something on a catastrophic worldwide level. 
And so nothing you're going to get from a local flood or just a little meandering stream. And so, but um, this right here shows you where there is, um, you can find, you know, there's fossil graveyards all over the planet. I mean, pick a continent. Um, now, in uh, the United States, um, these are the ones. Now, I'm adding to these as I learn more. Every time I find out of a new one, um, I just add it to my map. Um, one one of them that I just recently learned about, I was really amazed that I haven't heard more about it when I was first studying this years ago, was the Ashley Phosphate Beds. And so um, that's going to be around the South Carolina, the southern part of the United States. Um, this is just a little brief overview of what was there. It says um, the Ashley Beds is an enormous phosphate graveyard that contains mixed remains of man with land and sea animals notably dinosaurs plesiosaurs whales sharks rhinos rhinos horses mastodons mammoths porpoises elephants deer pigs dogs and sheep this catalog of fossils from the phosphate beds was given in the records of major edward willis who displayed them at multiple expositions willis phosphate Fossils and Phosphate Specimens, 1881, um, Professor F.S. Holmes, paleontologist and curator of the College of Charleston's Natural History Museum, described the fossil graveyard in a report to the Academy of Natural Sciences, remains of the hog, the horse, and other animals of recent date, together with human bones mingled with the bones of mastodon and extinct gigantic lizards. Okay, now this program here, I'm not going to show the video. If you do want to see it, just go on to my channel. I do have a short clip um, concerning this. This actually came from um, the Travel Channel back in um, February 3rd, 2000. I actually recorded it off the television and had it um, put onto a CD. But the program is called Super Volcanoes from the Travel Channel. And uh, but it talks about a population bottleneck, population bottleneck. But it's really amazing what they talk about this catastrophic event that, in their words, that almost wiped us out completely. And so I'm just taking a few little um, things that they said off of here. If you want to see it again, go to my playlist, and um, I, I believe the. Uh, the video will say um, something like, is this evidence for Noah's flood or the flood? And, uh, and so I'll have that put on the screen real quick as a, as a picture for you guys to see it. It's really interesting to see this. Um, but again, this is what they say. This is what they said. It was a dramatic reduction in population size at some point in our past. He said, it seems so incredible. The idea of all of us, you know, there's six billion people on the earth. I think now we're over seven. Um, this is, like I said, back during the year 2000. Six billion people on the earth. And what the data were telling us was that we, our species, was reduced to a few thousand. Suddenly, it hit us. We had something to say about human history. It says, our population may have been in such a precarious position that only a few thousand of us may have been alive on the whole face of the earth at one point in time. That we, mo we almost went, um, time, that we almost went extinct. That some event was so catastrophic as to nearly cause our species to cease to exist completely. And so, again, the biblical um, historical record says only eight people was alive, uh, alive, but they're getting really close. And so I think that was more than just a coincidental thing. And these are, for you um, logical um, atheists, these are scientists, okay, using science and our genetic makeup to make these um, remarks. Now, this gentleman here is Emmanuel Velikovsky. He wrote a book called Earth in Upheaval, um, and he also wrote Worlds in Collision. It's, and it is amazing. I don't know if he is a Christian, but he does take a lot of the things in the Bible, and he correlates them to um, actual events that happen through records of other countries, um, other societies, and stuff like that. Um, and it's really amazing. It's really amazing what he's been able to uh, 
to find out. But he talks about some of the things that they have found on this planet in geologic um, terms. He says here, when a fish dies, its body floats on the surface or sinks. Now this right here is in these little red squares. Or sinks to the bottom and is devoured rather quickly, actually in a matter of hours by other fish. However, the fossil fish found in sedimentary rock is very often preserved with all its bones intact. Entire shoals of fish over large areas numbering billions of specimens are found in a state of agony, but with no mark of scavengers attack. The explanation of the origin of fossils by the theory of uniformitary and evolution contradicts the fundamental principle of these theories. I didn't say that. This man said that. Nothing took place in the past that does not take place in the present. Today, no fossils are formed. That man said that, not me. And so he goes on to say, the size of continental areas covered by floods imply catastrophic events on a large scale and such events far beyond what is observed on seasonally overflowing rivers today again contradict the principle of uniformitary uh, uniformity and so he said that not me so this right here is um, I actually have this right here it's 28 fossil fish in this area and you can see the details there these fish were buried rapidly rapidly Fish gills begin to deteriorate in about four to five hours after the fish dies. Here's a picture of a fish eating another fish, and they were buried together. Here's the ichthyosaur giving birth. The remains of three young still lie in the body cavity. And there's a close-up of that, the baby coming right out. The front of the skull is still in the outer of the pelvis, outlet of the pelvis. Here we go. He goes on to say, Class, cataclysmic events in the past. Land animals were engulfed and buried by enormous tides carrying debris. In many places, avalanches of sand and volcanic dust entombed the aquatic life. Fish skeletons remaining in poses of death, undevoured and undecayed. Here we go. Here's two fish, one inside the pterosaur and the pterosaur. So you got aquatic life with the pterosaur, and that's what a pterosaur is. Land animal and a fish. Check it out. What are they doing together, buried together? Here's another one. Let's look at a, cute, a couple more um, things real quick. This is um, Langibanawig. Um, it's West Coast Fossil Park. Um, they call it the animal salad. And so right here at the bottom of the uh, continent of Africa, if you look at that little white dot there, um, it says, There before us were the bones of giant wild pigs, over 40 specimens of aardvarks, numerous long neck and short neck giraffes, and five different species of hyena, also an extinct form of hippo, a three-toed horse called a hipparion, um, three species of elephant, bot bontabok, ante antelopes, as well as the Bosolophene, which is which today is found only in Asia, a saber-toothed cat, a wolverine, an enormous African bear, and a large number of smaller animals such as mice, mole rats, golden moles, frogs, and lizards, including chameleons. Of birds, there are no less than, get this, 10,000. 10,000, and that was identified so far as of um, 2016 was, was the year of the article. Bones of 90 different species of those birds, including marine birds such as cormorants, penguins, and albatross, shorebirds, songbirds, parrots, woodpeckers, and at least one species of ostrich of even more importance included in the jumble of bones are those of seals, whales, megalodon sharks, creating a mixture of marine, avian, and land mammal bones that were laid down in this single catastrophic event. Now here's here's whales in the mountains. Might as well go ahead and hit that one. Um, here's uh, two whales in Michigan, 582 feet above sea level. One male in Vermont, uh, one whale in Vermont, uh, 500 feet above sea level. Sea level. Um, numbers of zooglodons in Alabama. If you look at the left bottom left hand picture, you can see that um, there are 500 feet above sea level. 
One male, one whale in Montreal, Quebec, 600 feet above sea level. Bones of whale north of Lake Ontario, 440 feet above sea level. And let me just say that that doesn't mean that the waters went as high as that. A lot of our land masses um, used to be at ground level. This is just the uh, tectonic plates um, shifting. Um, and, uh, and what has happened is that the water that flooded the earth is still here. It's still here. It didn't evaporate. Um, it's just the land masses. What the Lord did is he caused the land masses to rise and some to sink down. And what happened is the water just puddled up in pools. So it's still here. If you was to take some of these land masses and just bring them down just a little bit, the earth would flood right back again. Okay, um, here we go. Let's keep on going here. One nearly intact fossil whale, Santa Cruz County in California, um, discovered well above sea level in the hills in the mountainous area the remains of a mysticete whale, ancestor of the baleen whale. And so um, there you go with that. Okay, let's check out another comment he made. He says, if you don't have the facts. Now this here, he's actually making this comment at raw mat. He's, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this one here. It says, if you don't have the facts to debate with, don't try to debate. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Raw Matt has given logical atheists an invitation, an open invitation to come to standing for truth and to debate and to debate him. And so far, he's gotten no response. And so logical atheists, it's open. He's ready. If you don't think he's ready, then let's do it. And so, no debate. He is not. He's not um, taking him up on that. And so he says, "Schooled both of you. You don't even understand the science you try to debate with." So far, he has shown absolutely nothing. Um, we've asked for him to show LMAO. You didn't even know what your karyotes were. Um, actually, I do, and we'll look at that in a little bit. Um, geology debunks Noah's Ark. No evidence that the flood happened. Um, zoology, very obvious that two of every animal would not go well on a wooden boat. We'll look at that. But a family um, of not even professional shipbuilders. Um, and so I will say this. They weren't professional shipbuilders, but you got to understand something. People at the beginning of creation were much smarter than we are now. Adam came pre-programmed from the hand of God along with Eve. And so... These people were geniuses above geniuses. We would probably would be shocked to find out some of the things they could do and some of the things that they had that we don't have today. And so um, each generation from then has gotten worse, I think, physically, morally, and definitely intellectually. Um, we may have certain techno technological advancements, advancements and stuff, but we would probably, again, be shocked to, to know what they had back then we even see some of the building that some of these folks did um, in the past and we have absolutely no clue how they did it so that shows you the mind um, that these people had back then the only um, answer that we have in our science is that we say that aliens must have did it because people because humans back then were just too stupid to do it and so um, which is absolutely false and so but God told him what to build he told him how to build it, what to build it out of, and what to put in it. And so God is actually the architect of that boat. I think he would give them the know-how, the means, and the smarts to, to do that. And so it says, uh, why were they the only ones that had a boat? Well, God gave grace. We've already talked about that. God gave grace to Noah and his family. Um, and so it, the New Testament says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So it, there's it's definitely indication there that he went around telling people um, what God told him to do because surely somebody's going to come up to him and say, hey, what you building? And so he probably got laughed at just like Christians today are getting laughed at. And so nobody would believe him anyway. And so, and that's the reason why they went on art. And so... It says, atmospheric pressure and temperatures debunks Noah's Ark. Don't understand that. Um, the water that flooded the earth is still here. All you have to do is flatten out the um, land masses just a little bit, and it, the planet is flooded again. When God um, flooded the planet, um, it says that the waters abated. The waters only uh, cover the earth for at least five months. 
um, it did what God intended to do. It destroyed the land animals. And so after that, the, um, the land masses began to um, be raised and sunk down, and the waters pulled up into sections. So the water, it's all still here. It's all still here. Um, it didn't take. Uh, it didn't have to take years and years and years for the water to abate. It's. It. To, the Lord did it. He did it in about a, a uh, about a half a year, um, getting the waters to come back. But they were in that boat a little over a year, and so they had a year um, for it to happen. So I think that's plenty of time for the waters to do what it needs to do and to go uh, with the land masses being raised and the um, the water to 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 be um, held back by the land masses. Um, it says, uh, at evolution debunks Noah's Ark. Show us the proof. Um, science doesn't support mythology. If you had any knowledge or logic of how to apply it, then you would, and you cared about your education, you would know that, run away, stay delusional. And so, um, but at any rate, what we're going to do, let's go back to that. He says, very obvious that two of every animal would not go well on a wooden boat. And he says it again on another comment. Um, if you notice down there on the bottom, it see. Um, well, let's just read this. This is another one directed at Raw Matt. Um, science debunks, debunks Noah's Ark. He's constantly on Noah's Ark. He just can't get his hand hit off of Noah's Ark. No logical person on earth accepts that fable as truth. It's impossible scientifically and not realistic. Show us your evidence. Um, that's me saying that to him. Um, and then he goes on to say, two of every animal, LMAO, stupid claim, not to mention you die from temps and air pressure from a world flood. Okay, um, not understanding what he's talking about there. Um, to claim a world flood receded to what it is now is such a short, in a short period of time, impossible unless the earth left the habitual zone of the star, which uh, didn't. I'm not sure what he's meaning there, unless he's talking about the actual planet leaving its orbit around the sun. I got to know what you mean by that, my friend. Um, and so that makes absolutely no sense to me. Okay, he comes back at Raw Matt again. No, science doesn't prove anything from Noah's Ark is impossible. He, there is Noah's Ark again. Um, I had to um, black out one of his words because he just started cussing science all over the myth. Let's see. Two, here he is. Two of every animal and food to last that long with meat eaters and whatnot. Um, the most fictional story ever makes Harry Potter look true. Okay, uh, and so, well, let's look at that. Let's look at that. It says here, And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and cattle after their kind, and creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort, shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And that's Genesis 6, chapter 6, 19 through 20. Now, if you want to know what a actual kind of animal is, we're not talking about a variety of animals. You know, you got a variety of cats, a, a variety of dogs. We're talking about the kind, the actual kind. There's two. Just you need the cat kind. You just need two of them. Um, and so, if you want to look in now, baromenology is the Christian's view, the creationist view on kinds of animal. And so. Check that out. It's a bit long, but we go into it. We and um, and I'll break it down on exactly, um, you know, what this is and how we look at it. Okay, but just for time's sake and keeping this video short, um, just look at that if you want to supplement a little bit, and I think that can clarify a lot of things. Okay. But it says here, Genesis uh, chapter 7, verses 2 through 3, Of every clean beast thou shalt take thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Now notice this. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Did Noah have to go all across this planet and start collecting these animals? I say no, and because the scriptures say it. Let's look at this. Genesis 7, 9. 
There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. All right, Genesis 7:15. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. After the flood, the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon everything that move, moveth upon the earth, and upon all fishes of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. So before the flood, animals were not afraid of man. It was after the flood, God said, and the fear of you and the dread of you is going to be upon these animals. And so, but they did not have to. Um, to go out and collect these animals. God sent them these animals. He, they, the animals came to Noah to go into, inside that ark. Now what about the meat eaters? Let's go ahead and check that out. Genesis 6, 21, and take thee. This is what the Lord says now. This is what he's saying about what he needs to bring into the ark. It's just as clear as a bell. Logical atheist said that he studied the Bible. He's, he, he read it, but he's an atheist. He don't believe in God, but he don't know these answers. It says, Genesis 6, 21, And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. And so, there, what, what type of food are we talking about? Ah, it's very, very right on point. Genesis 1, 29 through 30, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. You say, okay, Donnie, that's the humans. That's pl the humans are supposed to eat the plants. Uh-uh, it says, reach down to the next one. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given, get this, every green herb for meat. And it was so. After the flood, Genesis 9, 3 through 4, everything, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb. It's so clear. It's so literal. Have I given you all things, but the flesh, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So basically saying you're not to consume blood like you would consume food, to drink it. Okay? And so... The plants and the animals at creation were, were um, the, excuse me, the, the, uh, the humans and the um, animals were plant eaters. They ate the vegetation. And so by the time the flood came, the Lord said, I want you to bring in the food that is eaten. What? The plants. That's what they were to bring in was the plants. And so then after the flood... God says, okay, now there's going to be a change. And he talks about every moving thing shall be meat. So now they can eat meat. They can eat meat. And so if you want more of the dietary laws, you can go into the book of Leviticus and see some of the dietary laws. And so um, at any rate, I don't want to get into the dietary parts of everything. Um, but, you know, this is just stating, you know, he wanted to know about the animals that were brought in, and he want to know what about the food. Well, here you go there. And if you want to know, again, they were only in the ark just a little over a year. And so, and you got to understand one thing. God was with them. God was with them. And I know a lot of atheists are, and a lot of naturalists out there are trying to say, how can you explain this in a naturalistic way? We can not. Because God said he brought the flood. He was the one that created the earth. When you take God out of the equation, you are taking away the fabric of our, of, of our existence. Because the Bible says that Jesus holds all things. He, all, with, him, with him, all things consist. And one day he's going to relax. And you're going to see just how much power he was holding back. I mean, you can take an atom and split it and... And see what happens. You can imagine God, he is, is holding all things, the power that that is, that that is to, be, to be able to do something like that. And so to tell us to take God out of the equation and explain it, uh, there's many things that we can't. We can't. God is the substance. He is the, he is the root. He is, the, he is our foundation. 
And so now in evolution, you don't have a foundation. You don't even have a foundation. You, your God, you would, we would consider your God to be that missing link that you just cannot prove, you cannot show. And so show us your missing link. Show us your missing link. For evolution to happen, I mean, you're saying macroevolution has to happen. Well, show us. Show us with all the millions and millions of years that things have, have been on this planet and died off, surely there's a, uh, um, a, uh, a fossil that was um, changing from one thing to the next one. But you can't show us that. Okay, lastly, let's look at this last comment here. Um, if you look um, right here in the square here, Logical Atheist um, has a comment directed at Raw Matt saying um, cytochrome C oxidase uh, 1, and then he gives the um, abbreviation for it, also known as mitochondrially encoded um, cytochrome C oxidase is a protein that is in humans is encoded by MTCO1 gene and other eurocote, eur eurocrotes, eukaryotes, excuse me. The gene is called um, COX1, CO1, or COI. I'm assuming that's what that is. Cytochrome C oxidase 1 is, or I, is the main subunit of the cytochrome C oxidase complex. Do you even know what a eukaryote are? Eukaryotes are. LOL. This doesn't support the fable of Noah. <laughs> he just cannot get off that Noah in the flood. <laughs> Trees and humans. Here we go. <laughs> Trees and humans are both eukaryotes, meaning they share a common ancestor here far, far, far back in time. <laughs> Way to misrepresent scientists. Oh, right, y'all. You're a creationist misrepresenting science is what you have to do to fit your silly beliefs of the world flood. <laughs> Girl, we go back on that flood again. <laughs> let's look at that eukaryote real quick. Okay, let's look at some quick notes on cells. Now, this information here came from my Microscopic World presentation that I actually just just finished um, recently and so if you want to check that out please check that out I go into all types of stuff about the microscopic world um, to show design at a microscopic level okay and so but these notes came from that presentation so I just jumped out at this you guys will have to excuse me um, you know just the Noah's Ark presentation alone there's over 12 hundred slides and so I'm trying to pick in there um, information that I want to pass along to answer these questions and it's so hard because I have to pass over lots of good information so if you really want to check out some neat things go on these presentations and check them out and so but it says here on the quick notes on the cells all living things are composed of cells cells are the smallest structures capable of basic life processes such as taking in nutrients expelling waste and reproducing estimates range from twenty to hundreds of trillions of cells make up the human body as the size of an organism decreases so does the number of cells <clears throat> until reaching the unicellular scale, bacteria and yeast. About 10,000 average size human cells can fit on the head of a pen. Now, there are two types of cells. You got eukaryotes, eukaryotes. They make up multicellular and some single-celled like yeast organisms um, and have a second membrane which encloses the nucleus of the cell. So, just logical atheist Here's your eukaryote cell. Um, I have it in my notes. Now, eukaryotes, they also contain a number of organelles. Now, um, you would think of these organelles or, or organelles like organs, organs in your body. Uh, you see, I've noticed that I've got that underlies organ, organelles. Subcellular spaces that are separated from the cytoplasm by their own membranes, much like that of rooms in a house. So, you see that cell there on the left, and you see that house on the right. Those organelles would be like rooms in your house. That's what that is. And so, each room in your house has a specific function, just like the organelles 
in a cell or the organs in your body. That's how you would think of organelles. Now, the other one is a prokaryote. Prokaryote. They are unicellular, one cell, and have no nucleus, membrane, or nor organelles. The mass of DNA rests in an area called the nucleoid, which is the middle of the cytoplasm. Now, for logistic atheists, he was saying that plants and humans have a common ancestor. That was that tree I was telling you guys about at the past video. I need some more information on this, my friend. Um, now, of course, he has to throw in that time lands of far, far long away. Um, you know, that's that fantasy world we're talking about. Um, you're going to have to give me some more information on this. Even if we did, let's back up here. Even if we did have, or let's just say what you're saying, this eukaryote, that doesn't mean we come from a common ancestor. That means we had this common designer. And so I have two eyes and my dogs have two eyes. That don't mean that we have a common ancestor. We have a common designer. And so you're going to have to work a little bit harder than that. I mean, you're really grasping for straws here, grasping at straws here on this one. And so, um, so just to let you know that we do know what eukaryotes are. And so, um, you know, I have it in my presentation if you even bother to look at it. And so, but guys... Um, Again, for those of you that aren't aware of what he was talking about, that's what this is, okay? Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop right there. Um, the next video is going to be winding this whole thing down, um, and I'm pretty much going to center on, um, he kept saying in many of his comments, nobody really cares, anybody with any logical sense or um, most people this, most people don't care about the Bible, this and that and this and that, you know, you know, um, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidences, you know, how do we answer that? And so I'm going to, um, put that into part three and we're going to answer it and we're going to answer it real good too. And, uh, and so I want this to, it's not intended for the naysayers as it is intended for those that do believe. And so I come across a lot of Christians, you know, they believe in Jesus, they're saved, they're going to heaven, and praise God for that. But sometimes when they're put in a situation where they have to give an answer, a lot of times they don't know how to answer it. And so, guys, I'm going to give you the things in the, in the Scripture where you can go to and you can answer these people. And so, um, you know, don't be afraid to step back sometimes and say, I don't know, but I'll get you that information. There is nothing wrong with doing that, and I've done it before. And so just like this eukaryote um, cell question, um, I know what a eukaryote is, but I need to know exactly what is he trying to say here with that. You know, just because we may have a same cell or maybe a same... Um, you know, a, a, a part of our system that may uh, the same in a certain way. It doesn't mean that we come from a common, a common ancestor. And so we come from a common creator. If guys, if you ever get, and I'm talking to my believer friends out there, my brothers and sisters, if you ever come across a situation, you don't know how to answer it. Just say, let me get back with you and I'll get that information. And you go to somebody that you can get that information from and then you can come back. And so don't think a lot of this stuff just come flat off the top of my head. Um, you know, I prepared for this. I prepared for this by going into my notes and going to, into my presentations that I've done already. And I've put this information up. And so having knowledge is it's not knowing everything. It's knowing where to get it. <laughs> okay. You know, that's knowledge. It's not knowing it. It's knowing where to get it. And so, um, so don't be afraid. The worst thing you can do is just make up something. And so that's usually when we get ourselves in trouble. And so we never want somebody to think that we don't have an answer. And so there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. And so there's lots of things in the Bible that I don't know. I mean, I don't have the mind of God. And so, and that's good. Because if I ever could figure him out, we're really in trouble. 
And so I think that's one of the biggest problems we have is we try to bring God down on our level. And I think that's what one of the biggest problems is with the naysayers and the atheists and people that just refuse to believe is they just cannot figure God out. And so if they can't figure him out, he just must not exist. And so you got to remember, we're talking about an all-powerful God, a holy being. And so um, if I want somebody that can create the world in six days, I want the God that can create the whole universe in six days because that lets me know that he can take care of my little minuscule problem. And to him, it's not a minuscule problem. It's If it's a big thing with me, it's a big thing with him. And he he is there to help us. And so thank God we have a God and we have a Father that loves us and he's got a a, a future for us. And, um, and I will say this to my atheist people out there and people that don't want to believe, you know, we win in the end. It's just as simple as that. Why? Because the Bible says it. And we believe it. It's his word. And in the next video, I'm going to show you that we don't have to prove one thing other than God's word to you. And that's it. Welcome back to this third and final installment of this um interaction that I had with um, logical atheist <clears throat> now for those of you that are just getting into this um, there was about a year ago if you notice on the screen um, I uh, right there where it says uh, soft tissue and dinosaur fossils that's my playlist I just added this in I did not download it onto the channel this was just added in from a uh, another channel and uh, but it's Nova Science now. Um, about a year ago, somebody uploaded this where they interview Mary Schweitzer in <clears throat> in regards to the uh, um, soft tissue that was found in a T. Rex thigh bone. And uh, I had made a um, a uh, comment, if you notice there in that red box, awesome video clip. I love it. Genesis one one explains it all. Um, well, it was about a day. Let's well, see, about a year later, um, I got a. A response from somebody that said from logical atheists some a fellow on his has his own channel called logical atheist that said uh, Genesis is pure fiction and from there it went on and on and on um, and you know for the most part I will say this we we ended up just going round and round um, the Bible's not real you know nobody really supports it you know and then I try to you know give some type of evidence to some of the things that he says and it ended up I think both of us uh were getting frustrated at each other and the name calling started um curse words were given by him um in so much I've had to black out some of them um on the previous video and um <clears throat> it still escalated even into my own channel and so finally I just made the um uh, I sent a a message out to logical atheists um, telling them saying hey listen man we need to stop taking shots at each other um, you know you're an atheist so be it you know um, and then you always you know just keep it clean but I was looking at the um, interactions that we we were having and it just it was just immature and so I didn't feel that it was a good witness for my own st for my own channel and that's not what I want the channel to represent and so um, you know I need to say this again to you know newcomers whether you're an atheist or a believer um, my channel is not really for debating um, my channel is for the believers <laughs> that's what it's for I designed the whole thing not to try to prove anything to somebody that don't believe uh, my channel is for people that do believe I want to encourage them and the scriptures and creation and stuff like that so that way they can have a background into the topics and know how to answer people um, but myself I really don't want to debate I, I have done debates before um, I have done a public debate debate before it wasn't planned it was kinda of surprised on me um, but I was ready and um, and so um, I it was nearly about an hour a little over an hour I debated a Mormon and um, and I tell you what, you know, everybody said I did real good, but 
I just am not a debater. Um, I tend to get short fused with these folks um, because it's like this, you know, you got your Chevrolet people and you got your Ford people, you know, and neither shall the two mix. I mean, it just, it's just the way it is, you know. These people have decided in their heart they don't believe in God and they do not believe in the Bible. And nothing I'm going to say is going to change that fact. You know, my responsibility, and we're going to talk about this towards the end of the uh, video, our responsibility as believers is to present the message. Whether they accept it or not is between them and the Lord. Um, the scriptures say that it's the Holy Spirit that draws somebody. And so somebody can be so... Um, calloused that the Lord can just harden their position and then that's it and so um, you know if these folks want to come to my channel and have a legit question I mean a legit question I'm not talking about catapulting into an argument or debate if they want to have a legit question I am here to answer that question if I can if I can it don't mean I'm an idiot or I'm ill-educated and all that stuff it just means I don't have the answer um, it don't mean I can't find the answer, just I don't have it at the time. And so I've never been one to be kind of off the hip, um, you know, as far as, um, you know, doing a debate with people. Um, I'm really better off in, in give me your question, and then when I get some time to sit down and go through my material and references, I will find it. And so um, that's usually the the... I'm usually better in that way. I don't know, call it old age or what have you, um, but I, it seems to be better for me in that area. And so, but if you are the one that would like to debate, please go to Standing for Truth, Standing for Truth YouTube channel, and they will welcome you, open arms, and they will connect you to somebody so that you can debate with. And so, but at any rate, guys, um, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to kind of round this thing up we're going to round it up with some with some this video here is really for the believers really for the believers um, um it's not so much for logical atheists um though if he or she would wants to see this so be it um i have also been in contacted by another channel who had another question and i just pretty much shut them down um, and told them, hey man, if you're not a believer, you're, if, you're, if you don't believe in God, you're really, you know, we're wasting our time. Um, but they were pretty animate in me um, answering a question. And so I told them that I would put that question in this video. So we're going to go through their question also. And so who knows, maybe in the future, maybe um, it would be a good thing for me to have kind of a question answer video from time to time. Maybe once a month, once every couple weeks it just depends on how many questions I get um, and so maybe that would be a good thing to do um, you know I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Francis and Friends uh, it's on the Jimmy Swaggart channel they got a pretty good idea it's called Francis and Friends and what they do is they have a panel of people and they all kind of specialize in a certain area and what they do is they just take uh, phone calls or they'll have a topic that was emailed to them, and they'll have a, a round-the-table discussion about that. And so uh, maybe that's something uh, we could do in the future. Um, you know, again, uh, it's, you know, if uh, those from uh, Standing for Truth and Raw Mad, if you guys think this could be something that would be a, a neat little idea, um, I know they do something like that already where they'll have, they'll invite people in and they'll take, questions and stuff like that that is a good thing that is a good thing um i think that was a really neat um idea that uh the jimmy swagger had on his um station and so i listened to a bunch of them um and it was i learned a lot it, it was just really neat um you know what questions and, and i'm gonna talk about all types of questions it don't matter what it is um, they take it in and they put it into a biblical worldview and give them an answer through the scriptures. And I think that's a great idea. I think that's the way Christians should look at this world is in a biblical worldview. And I think that's where we, um, we have friction at with our non-believing friends. Um, they want to look at the world in a secular worldview. We want to look at it in a biblical worldview. And when you asked us to give us and give them an answer in a naturalistic way, it's hard for us to do that in some ways because you're taking God out of the picture. And I'm sorry, but 
you can't do that. <laughs> Just God is God, and he is to be given the glory for everything. Um, and so, but let's go on here, and let's go ahead and get into to some of these questions. Um, Logical Atheist had this uh, directed towards Raw Matt, and I think I'm going to take this one here. He says, there isn't a single scientific theory that supports Noah's flood, nor scientific laws. Can't even name a professional scientist that supports it either. Creation scientists have no credibility with their peers due to them pushing religion and science. Science is for the the natural and our best and only way of understanding our natural planet and universe. And so um, now what I'm doing here on this one particular is... Um, I'm wanting to take that one statement there. Can't even name a professional scientist that supports it either. Now, if you'll look at the uh, screen here, you'll notice I've got a lot of names and some organizations. Now, Creation Research Society, just to ans answer the um, logical atheist here, Creation Research Society um, also puts out a magazine. It's called CRS Quarterly Magazine. Now, these people are scientists. These people are scientists and have degrees. Um, and they write in all facets um, concerning this world. Um, but there's some other names here, here that um, some of my creation friends will recognize, um, but you can check these people out also. Michael Ord um, writes extensively, especially when it comes to meteorology. Um, and so he used to be a meteorologist. And uh, But Dr. John D. Morris, Walt Brown, Michael J. Behe, John C. Sanford, M. R. DeHaan, Georgia Purdom. Um, of course, the folks at Answers in Genesis have many people that write for them, again, with credentials that are professors, doctors. Um, these people know what they're talking about. They have biologists um, and, they, and geologists. They know all about this type of stuff. Um, Creation Ministries International also have writers for them, all types of backgrounds, um, just about anything you can name. And they have a magazine called creation.com magazine. Now, what we're going to do is um, we're going to look at a little uh, short clip of um, a video that I did about two and a half years ago. You're going to hear my wife and I talking. Um, and uh, we're going through um, some Bible study helps. And so if you want to learn about more about that, go into Bible study helps um, playlist and you can see some of the things that I have in there. And so, but let's take a look at that real quick. Now, if for those people that want to kind of delve into the creation um, aspects, um, the uh, the next, these next magazines that I'm going to show you, I am a member of these. I do have subscriptions that come to me. And these are some, if you want to go in depth into this stuff, um, or, or if you want, you know, just start a library of your own, this would be some good stuff to get. This one here is from Creation Research Society. Creation Research Society, it's called um, CRS Quar Quarterly, and, um, or Creation Research Society Quarterly. Um, you get four a year that comes. And um, these are some that I have. I scanned them. And uh, so these pictures that you're seeing is really unique. And if you can read um, that first one, it says special in issue um, genetics. And so, um, but these guys are scientists. These guys are scientists. And so these aren't your, just your, your basic folks. Now, all these that I'm showing you, except for the Flavius, uh, except for Josephus and the Manners Customs of the Bible, all the magazine subscriptions that I'm showing you as far as the creation stuff is in, is in the uh, drop down in the uh, description. So um, you can go to uh, the Creation Research, Creation Research Society webpage, and um, I've got a link. I've got a link that you can go to, and it gives the background of these guys. And so, but I'm going to tell you right now, anytime you have anybody that says, well, creationist, you know, uh, evolution was written by scientists, and these guys know what they're talking about. I'm going to tell you right now, these guys know what they're talking about. A lot of times, whenever I'm doing any type of research, Anytime I pick up their magazine, I got to get a background of what they're talking about because they talk in scientific terms. So if anybody out there has a scientific background, um, 
and they understand a lot of the lingo that these guys talk about, and you like to go in deep and stay down long, this is your magazine. This is your magazine. Great magazine. Um, and um, let's see, uh, you get four issues. Um, it's $38 for a regular subscription for one year, or you can get a paperless subscription for uh, $31. And so outstanding um, magazine. And so, like I said, if you like to go in deep into this stuff, these guys go in deep. They really do their homework. Um, they also put out uh, Creation Matters. You'll see that. There's two of them. Uh, the one on the left, I just got that recently. And um, they talk about, um, th these are like little, little. Uh, they're real thin magazines. Um, there's, there's a lot inside of it, but it's not near as thick as the quarterly magazines. Um, but if you'll see over to the one on the left, if you go to the third one down, it says biomaterial from dinosaur fossils. And so some of you out there are saying, you mean to tell me they found fresh tissue in dinosaurs? Absolutely. And so later on in, uh, the videos to come in the future, we're going to talk about those. And so these are great magazines though. And so they have actually got a, um, um, they're actually researching a lot of that uh, fresh tissue and dinosaur fossils that um, they've been able to get their hands on. So great magazine. I highly advise you guys that want to get into this. These are this is one of my top picks. Next one that they, this is still Creation Research Society. Um, this right here is called Creation in a Flash. Now those um, quarterlies. Now I'm going to kind of read on here too to make sure I'm telling you right. The top one it says Creation in a Flash. You can see that little thumb drive. Um, I actually have that one. This is a card that I actually got in the mail with mine. It has volumes one through forty-seven. That's 1963 through 2011. And so the Creation quarterlies. Um, that's all those. That is a ton of magazines that they have in there. And um, it has also volumes 1 through 15 of Creation Matters. So the last magazines I just showed you, Creation Matters, they have, um, that's 1996 to 2010. That's a ton of information, guys, a ton of information in a thumb drive. And that thumb drive is searchable. You can search that thumb drive. It's in PDF um, format. I love this thing. It's absolutely incredible. And you can get updates on this. Um, I'm not really for sure. I didn't write down how much that was. It's not a whole lot of money. It's not a whole lot of money. Donnie, how uh, much were the Creation Matters magazines? You didn't mention Creation Matters. Ma Creation Matters magazines, there's no cost. Oh. That's part. That's actually part of your subscription. Oh, so that comes with the quarterly. That comes with magazine. the quarter. That's a good question because I actually, um, I didn't, That yeah, that's good because they just, it's a little something they give you on the side. So does it come in between the times of the other it magazines? It comes in between. Okay. So, so you'll get, there's, it comes, like I said, like like, like quarterly, mm -hmm. quarterly every year. Um, you, you got fall, spring, yeah. mm -hmm. summer, and winter. And then in between there, you'll get the creation matters. Okay. Tons of information, tons of information. So a lot of the things that I'm going to be showing on the videos to come and, and other creations, some of them I got from Creation uh, Research Society. Um, and so it, it's really good. But this right here, creation in a flash, you can't update this. You can call them and get an update, and I believe it's cheaper than the first one mm -hmm. that you got. Awesome. It's, it's extremely awesome. But you guys on YouTube can pause it and read over all the information that you see on the screen here. Um, great. It's, it's absolutely just a great thing. Um, Answers in Genesis. Everybody's heard of Answers in Genesis, um, Ken Ham's uh, ministry. This is an outstanding um, magazine. Um, I, I'm talking for teenagers, for kids, for adults, um, lots of information in these things. Um, and as you can see, the, the, um, the picture on the, uh, um, right hand side, um, excuse me, left hand side is the cover of this particular magazine. And the one on the right hand side is the inside cover. That's the inside cover. So if you kind of want to see, you know, how they break it down, take a look at this. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, highly advise it. Um, and the cost on this is you get a membership subscription. It's six issues. It's six issues. $29 for one year or, 29, or $21 for just digital. So you can get either digital 
or you can get um, paper. If you want both of them, it's $37. And so it's really an outstanding deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, $29, I mean, for uh, we're talking about people that do their homework. And so these people, the, a lot of the writers that write in these magazines are people with degrees. Mm -hmm. These are people with degrees. They know what they're talking about. And they are, and I'm talking everything from biology to geography, um, different types of archaeology, biblical um, questions and stuff like that. Outstanding magazine. Outstanding magazine. Highly advised uh, this one here. And so also if you look down at the bottom, this is inside in the, in, the inside cover here. You'll see a, the thing that says "kids." This is kids' answers inside the middle of the magazine of Answers in Genesis uh, magazine, Answers magazine. They have a little fold out, and the fold out is um, is for kids. It folds out into like four four pages. And uh, this one here is a story about. It says, "In the land of the dinosaur." It's a little story. Um, it talks about behemoth. And um, and it's got little puzzles in there, dot to dots for the kids to do. Uh, but it's a great, it's a great um, look. Like I said, this magazine is just great. It it gives something for everybody, and so highly advised this this magazine. It's it's something that um, it was one of my uh, first picks whenever I started getting into this. I had to have it, and uh, great magazine. Um, this magazine here is Creation Creation Magazine or it's called creation.com. Great magazine. Again, um, anybody can un anybody can read this. Um, and I didn't put the inside of the magazine on this one because they tell you on the outside of it. If you look at it, it says, it talks about how um, they have found um, some ships um, as large as Noah's Ark. Um, and this is, is a huge Chinese wooden ships from the 15th century confound modern critics. And then they get into the genealogies of Jesus and then fast burial, fossil graveyards. That's one of my um, little hobbies. Um, I like to look into fast burials and uh, huge fa fossil graveyards. I show a ton of them in my Noah's Ark presentation. But this is creation.com, great magazine, a wealth of knowledge um, in these magazines here. If, if I had to say, um, you know, which one I would pick, um, I would have to say um, Answers in Genesis would probably be a well-rounded one. Answers in Genesis or Creation. If you get into the Creation Research Society, you really need, I really, if you're going to go into the Creation Research Society, you need to be somebody that really gets in deep into this stuff. Um, the creation of the flash is worth it alone if you just want to just read the articles um, and not be dedicated to subscriptions. Creation of the flash is probably a, a, a good way to go. So you're saying it's very technical. It's extremely technical. Okay. Extremely technical. So this is more layman's terms. This is layman's terms, creation.com or the answers in Genesis. Either one of those magazines is going to be... Um, is going to be really good, but I, I got to keep forgetting that, you know, not everybody out there is going to be doing what I'm doing um, as far as going out and um, speaking on this or, um, or, or seeking an outside type of ministry on this. If you're just wanting to create a good um, library for yourself, or if you teach uh, Sunday school mm -hmm. or, or a pastor that just wants to uh, preach a topic on it, you know, on, on creation, it's, this is a good way to, of, of getting it. And so, and you can go online also on their websites and they have articles and stuff like that. So you can do that too. Um, creation magazine, as far as the cost, it's four issues, um, for $25 for just the print, or you can get $30 for one year for print and digital. So that's not yeah, that's bad. A good deal. $30 for print and digital subscription. Mm -hmm. Again, the links are at the bottom. Just click on them and go right to it. And and just for just to let you guys know, I am not in cahoots with these folks. <laughs> they don't know I'm doing this. And so I'm just trying to help you guys out. I'm not making any money on this. I don't, I'm not getting any type of um, kickback for um, pointing people towards that. And so um, check them out. The outstanding bits of information. Okay, let's move along to the next question. This is from the channel Come As You Are. Come As You Are. He originally had sent me a question um, uh, that had to do with the flood, the evidence of the flood, and, um, and you know, he doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in the Bible. And so I originally came back um, to him and said, hey, listen, 
you know, um, unless you believe in God or the Bible, there's really, you know, there's no reason to carry this discussion on any further. And um, he was pretty animate that he wanted to know that question that, that he had. And so um, I went ahead and I said, okay, I tell you what, I'll add your question to the video that I'm doing today. And so that's where we are now. And so um, we went back and forth there for a little bit. Everything was real good, no attacking. And so I decided to leave um, the um, exchange up. Um, and let me just say, with lo Logical Atheist, I went ahead and just deleted everything. Um, I just thought it was just, it sounded like a bunch of school kids. And so I'm not blaming one side or the other. But it just, you know, when you get into where you're just attacking um, and throwing up, you know, nasty remarks, I'm going to delete you. And I'm on block your channel. It's just as simple as that. Um, but if you have a legit question, put the question up. And so I'll see if I can answer it. Um, I won't debate, but I will see if I can answer it. Um, but he goes on to say here, um, it says, so let's just imagine for a moment that there's a God. Because I kept telling him, I said, listen, unless you believe there's God or a Bible, I'm just, we have, have, to, we have to have a common foundation. And so I'm just, it's just a waste of time. And so, but anyway, he says, just let's, let's just imagine there's a, a God wouldn't all the evidence that we support that we find support the story in the, of creation and the flood or shouldn't it someone isn't telling you the truth again why doesn't the evidence match the story in the bible or all those science scientific studies just made up do you know to make creationists mad is that what you're saying and so um in a nutshell i'm gonna say this right now when you veer off from god um the only thing that you got is downfall and and so it's going to be a downward cycle or a downward spiral. And uh, and for the most part, I'm going to tell you right now, most of what you're going to learn in school when it comes to evolution, it, and I'm going to say all of it when it comes to evolution, but most of what you're going, most of what you're going to learn in school, unless it's a creation, um, uh, a good Christian school um, that teaches the Bible, um, you're going to learn evolution, and it's all just hogwash. Um, anything that, that in, you know... I guess I can kind of summarize this question up by saying anything that teaches that we evolved from a lower life form, you can go ahead and scratch it off the list. God's word says that he created man on day six, a fully human, a fully human being able to talk, think and conduct themselves. <laughs> it's as simple as that. We didn't evolve from another animal. And um, and so anything that, that, that smacks of that, you can go ahead and scratch it off the list. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's if they did it to make creationists mad. They made it to kick God out is what they did. Um, and so if you want to believe that you come from a rock or a worm or a lizard or an ape, whatever, the, I think the problem that creation have with it is that it's, it's federally funded. And it's supported by tax dollars. And so I've spoken in public schools before, in Bible history classes, that's not supported by tax dollars. It's supported by the local churches. Um, but there's a high school that I was in several times until the lady retired. I don't know if they started the school back up or the class back up, but I, I spoke in them. And the principal sat in on the very first one I did. And they always, they always had me talk about the flood. And so I had a blast, and uh, I was just volunteer, and uh, we had some good classes, and I brought some fossils and, and Noah's Ark and stuff like that. And um, um, I tell you what, if anybody out there wants a good ministry, get into your local Bible history classes in your public school and um, make up a presentation about anything. They, they're looking for people. Um, and take, take any Bible story, historical Bible story in the Bible, and make up a presentation, and they'll welcome you. Um, but to go back to this guy's question, um, there's evidence all around us. Um, again, go into my, um, my Noah's Ark presentation. Go through there. Look at the fossil graveyards. The fossil graveyards alone shows a catastrophic worldwide flood where these animals were found. Some of them, over a billions and billions of fossils were found. You don't get that from just a little local stream or a little local flood. There is evidence all over the place. And so, but again, if you don't believe the Bible and you don't believe in God, 
we're just going to go round and round. We're not going to really get anywhere. And so that was the reason why I was just kind of, you know, getting away from it. But, you know, yeah, man don't want God. It's not any surprise to me. I mean, that's the way it is. You know, you kick God out, and what have you, what have you got left? What? How can you tell little Johnny how he got here if you don't want God to be in it? Well, they got to make up something. And so what they're making him up is they make they tell him he's an accident. And the, it, okay, where does he go when he dies? Well, he just he just dies, and he goes into whatever some force or whatever. What is it? I mean, it's just there's nothing. I mean, and they wonder why we have so many problems in the school. As kids, kids are being taught that they're an accident, that they evolved from slime, and then here they are today, and you try to make them all feel good and that they're worthy. So when they die, they're really not going to go nowhere. I mean, how depressing is that? And so, uh, but that's my answer to you. If you really want to go into the uh, flood presentation, look at that. All my evidence is there. And go to the dinosaur one. Just pick out the first few videos of the dinosaur, and I go into God. How powerful is he? You know, back up my claims on a six-day creation. It's all there. Everything is there. You just got to um, go to it. I just don't, I'm just not interested in going back and forth, texting on the phone, Um evidence is when we're really not going to get anywhere anyway and it takes time from my family and so but if you have a legit question you know put it in there and i'll see if i can answer it maybe i'll do a, other videos in the future going to uh logical atheist back to logical atheist he said your god claim has not been met with evidence extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence so and he says, I care about truth. That's why I'm an atheist. <laughs> There's no evidence to support any God. Gods have been debunked. You're guilty of the God of the gaps fall fallacy. And so I'm going to go back to that one thing that says, um, your God claim has not been met with evidence. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So that right there is what I want to center on. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidences. You know, what do we as Christians have to prove to the world about God existing? Now, this here is going to be, um, this is, I'm talking to the believers. If you're an atheist, you don't believe in the Bible, you don't believe in God, um, this is not for you, okay? This is not for you. If I welcome you to listen. If you want to listen, that's fine, because then you can see our stand, at least my stand, on what I'm, on my stance on what I'm supposed to do to prove to you that he exists. What type of evidence am I supposed to show you to prove that he exists? And so I'm going to take the scripture. I'm taking God's word as my basis, as my foundation to guide me, to command me, to encourage me on what I'm supposed to do to those around me and to the world around me. Now, um, there is a story in the Bible. It's called The Rich Man and the Beggar. The Rich Man and the Beggar. And so now a lot of my Christian friends are already going to be familiar with this, and maybe some of them are going to be a little confused on where I'm going with this. And so, but it's very unique. It's very detailed in this story about exactly what we're to do and how we're to do it. And so um, I want those of you to really take note of this story, and I think it'll help a lot of you out. So let's go through it real quick. Luke 16, Luke chapter 16, 19 through 22, it says, There was a rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of swords and desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried all right it goes on to say and in hell he lifted up his eyes that was the um the rich man being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. 
And besides all this, between you, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that which would um, come from from thence. And so, in a nutshell, this is um, okay. You got the rich man and you the beggar, and um, before the death of Jesus, um, all. Everyone that died went into a place called Sheol. It was it was a two compartment place. You got paradise on one side, and you had hell on the other side. Now the hell that we're talking about here is not the final abode, which is spoken of in Revelation called the Lake of Fire. The Lake of Fire. There is not one person in Lake of Fire. The first two inhabitants to go into the Lake of Fire will be the beast and the false prophet. The beast and the false prophet uh, mentioned in the book of Revelation. Those will be the two first inhabitants of the lake of fire and so but here this hell is like a holding place you would consider this holding place like your local jail so you got a prison that's where you meet out your judgment this hell it is um, that they're speaking about here is like the county jail you are being held until final judgment then then you go to prison which would be the lake of fire okay now it goes on to say then he said i pray thee therefore father that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. But Abraham saith unto him, Now this is my point. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went um, unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. Listen to that, y'all. That's an amazing statement. So he's talking about the Moses and the prophets is the Old Testament. That's what they're talking about. They're basically talking about God's word. They have, in our language today, they have the Bible. They have the Bible. And it says this here. If they hear not, let's just put it in our language, if they hear not the Bible, the Scriptures, they wouldn't even be persuaded, though you was to produce a miracle and rose somebody from the dead. That is a, an amazing statement. An absolutely amazing statement. Now, the people might say, well, Donnie, how do you know he's talking about Moses and the prophets, Moses and the prophets? Well, the Bible has a lot to say about that. Um, now, let's go back. sixteen, uh, Luke 16, 31. Remember this. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither, they, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now, in Acts 28, 23, it says, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded. He expounded and testified the kingdom of God. Listen to this. Persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. Isn't that something? So he was using the scriptures to testify about God and Jesus from the Bible. He didn't go, well, see, you'd look over here and you see this, this land mass over here. No, he was using the scriptures, even though, even though that the Bible does, does declare that all you have to do is look at the creation around us and it declares a creator. He's using the scriptures here. He's using the scriptures here. Let's move on. Luke 24, 27, and beginning at, here we go. Moses and all of the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, that was Jesus doing that. That was Jesus, the creator of the, of the universe. He used the scriptures and expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You can see Jesus all through the Bible, Old and New Testament. You can see it all the way through it. He's in there. In typology and foreshadows and stuff like that. He's all the way through that thing. All right, let's look at another one. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written. Here we go again, y'all. 
in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And he's telling him, hey, y'all, all you got to do is look in the scriptures. I'm in there. I'm all in there. And so, again, where do these atheists attack? They attack God's word and they attack God. The Bible's not true. The Bible's not true. Listen, that's the only thing we're supposed to use to, to even remotely witness to you at all. If you don't believe the Bible, we can produce a dinosaur in front of you, and you still ain't going to live. I mean, I mean, you're still not going to believe. You would not believe if I took a T-Rex from the Congo swamps, dropped them in front of you, and said, see, the Bible's true. You'd say, no, that's not true. It's not true. We can produce a miracle. I think they could find the Ten Commandments, set it in front of the world, and they still wouldn't believe. You could find Noah's Ark, set it in front of the world, and they still ain't going to believe. The only, thing that, the only thing that would do is it would strengthen the faith of believers. If it's a non-believer, they're not going to believe regardless. All right, John 1, John chapter 1, 45. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him. Why? Because of geology? Why? Because we found something in the natural world that shows there is a God? No. It's just what they say. Of whom Moses in the law and in the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And so there you go. It's as simple as that. We don't have to try to prove anything to anybody as far as in a physical creation world. All we have to do is show them the scriptures. This is what the Word of God says. I don't believe it's the Word of God. That's your problem. You just basically consigned yourself. They will be just like that rich man in hell begging that somebody would come out and go to their families and their friends and tell them it's real. It's real. But for that rich man, he is still in hell right now. And he will be in hell until death and hell is brought up and cast into the lake of fire. That rich man, he knows that there's a God now. He knows that there's, Je he knows Jesus is real. He knows it's real. But when he stands before the white throne judgment, the great white throne judgment, it's not going to be a second chance. It's going to be confinement for eternity in the lake of fire. That's what it's going to be. He's not going to get a second chance. Those that are in hell now are just waiting their final judgment. Well, some of the atheists might say, no, Donnie, uh-uh, I want proof. I want to see God's face. I want to see a miracle. I want to see something that is like the Old Testament stories, the splitting of the Red Sea. I want to see a sign in heaven that there is a God, and or I'm not going to believe. Well, this right here is what Jesus said about that. Matthew 16, chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, King James Version. It says, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees. Now, that's your religious leaders now. This is a religious leader, leader saying this stuff. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, when it, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather. For the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can but can ye not discern the signs of the times? So he's basically saying, you can look up in the sky and see what's what's going to happen from day to day as far as weather patterns, but you can't see the signs of the times or what's happening. And he says, a wicked and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, Jonah. And he left them and departed. What did he say? Did Jesus say, okay, since you want to see a sign, here you go. No. He looked at them and said this. Now, this is, into, this is to all my atheist people that want, a, want some physical proof. This is, this, is your, this is what I'm saying to you. A wicked an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And so they're saying, well, what does that mean? Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Jesus is going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Basically what he's saying is, my resurrection 
will be the proof. That will be the sign. And you know what? They still don't believe. They still don't believe. Was I there? Was I? Was Donnie there when Jesus rose from the, rose from the dead? Nope, I was not. I was not there. But you know what? I have faith. I have faith in God's holy word and God's written word that it was there. And when I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior, was there a shock wave that came over me? Did I levitate off the ground? Was I able to pick up a tree with one arm? No. No. But it's he's in here. His The Holy Spirit took residence within me, and he's working within me. And I know, I know that the Scriptures are true. Okay, if you look at this word here, um, we're going to go into, um, you know, taking God out. If you take God out, now that's something an atheist would not say. Well, let's just forget God. I want to see how this, I want you to prove to me that this can happen. This can happen, and I don't want no God, I don't want no supernatural force being a part of it. I want to know it. Just forget the Bible, forget everything. I want to know in a naturalistic way how certain things are, how certain things happen. How, the flood, explain the flood to me. Well, you can't. Because God said that he was the one that sent the flood. And so, and that's just like with anything else. When you try to take God out of the equation, you take our foundation out. Um, God is supposed to get the glory for what he done. And if you don't believe that, go into the book of Romans and start reading from the first chapter of it and read what happens to those that don't give God the glory for his creation. Okay? So we're going to look at a few things here, and I'm going to show you this. Now, the paranormal. Now, this actually came from my, I did a, a little series on the paranormal. If you want a really good spooky um, thing to listen to, go through my uh, paranormal videos that I did, and I went through a few things and then showed you what the Bible had to say about it in a biblical worldview. But you take paranormal real quickly. Para means outside and normal, outside the realm of known science. So a lot of the atheist friends are science, science. They always lean on science. Science says this, science says that. Science debunks this, science debunks that. They just throw the term around and never really give real any e evidence on showing how it debunks it. They just say it debunks it. And so, and 97% of scientists don't agree with this, and 57%, it don't matter. It really don't matter if, if they believe us or not. Um, and so, but the Bible claims that there's a broad way and there's a narrow way. And most people would take the broad way, which is the destruction. And so the Bible also says that not to, do, not to follow a multitude to do evil. And so, again, most people are going to take the path of destruction, but it doesn't mean that we have to. If we're the only ones, if I'm the only one on the planet that follows the Lord and everybody else wants to go the opposite way, well, the majority is wrong. You cannot guide your life and your thought processes by majority opinion. It's, it's, it's a fallacy. I mean, it's wrong. And so, but right here, outside the realm of known science, now, Genesis 6, 17, it says, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood upon the uh, waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is a breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now, that right there, God was the one that did it. He was the one that said, Hey, I'm going to destroy the earth, and he did. If you take God out, you're taking away what started the whole flood. It was him. It was him that started the thing outside the realm of known science. Now, Jesus feeding the 5,000, how do you explain that? You can't. You can't. How can you explain Jesus feeding the 5,000 men? It says 5,000 men besides women and children. There very well could have been 10,000 people there with two fishes and five loaves. How did he do it? How did he do it? You can't. You take God out, you take it. You take the uh, the miraculous out of it. I mean, you. It's it's as simple as that. You cannot take our Lord off His creation. It's just you just can't do it. You can't do it. Atheist, you've agreed to do it. You've agreed to do it, and now you're wanting answers to everything. <laughs> we don't. When you're a creationist, you don't need answers to everything. You know God was the one that did it. Outside the realm of known science. All right, Hebrews 11.1. 1. 
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, you can take that word substance, and it's the ground or confidence. So, faith is the ground and the confidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so, we have faith faith in our God. Jesus said if you had as much faith as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. And so I haven't gotten there yet, but that must be some powerful faith. Here we go, 11.3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And you can also see John 1.1. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So through faith, we understand. We understand that. Donnie, how, do you, how, did, how did God do it? Okay, tell me how he did it. Tell me how did it. I don't know how he did it because I wasn't there. And that's what he was telling Job in the book of Job. Were you there when I did this? Were you there when I did that? He was reminding Job just who he was. Now, Psalms 33, 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. That's the type of God that we have. That's the type of God that I serve. And you're telling me to take God out of it? No way. No way. I want him in it. I don't want him to. I don't, I don't want to kick him off to the side. Romans 1, 20, For the invis invisible things of him from the creation of the world. Here we go. Now, this is my answer to the atheist. For the invisible things of him, from him, the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So, they are without excuse. Who is without excuse? The atheists are without excuse. There is no excuse for them to look outside when they go outside, scratch their heads, and go, there's no God. I don't see no God around here. I don't see any proof that there's a God. Well, the Bible clearly states right there that you can look at the creation and see him. You can see his evidence that, he, that his handiwork. Psalms 19, 1 through 3. To the chief musicians, a psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of God. Go outside on a night when there's no light pollution. Look up and just be in awe. <laughs> it's enough to make your jaw drop. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day they uttereth their speech, and night unto night they showeth his, his knowledge. Now this is it. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So what that last phrase is saying is you can speak Chinese, you can speak um, Spanish, Portuguese, German, I don't, you name a language. You name a language in the world. And there is no speech and nor lang no language that the creation can't speak to that individual and says that there's a God. But well, guys, we're going to have to stop right here. Um, I'm about an hour into this thing, and there's still so much. I actually had more I was going to show. Um, but again, I mean, my presentations are literally a few thousand slides easily. Um, and so I invite the atheists out there, go through my material. Go through my material one by one if you want to. Um, those of you that are really seeking to know how certain things came to be um, and you really want an answer and you don't want to debate, contact me if I don't know the answer um, or, you know, because one thing about creation is we all, it's, we're like a jack of all trades. Um, we're like, you know, we're, we, we touch on many different topics. Um, and so, um, you know, I specialize or I don't want to say specialized, but um, I have a lot of knowledge in the dinosaurs. Um, and so in, in the flood and the microscopic world, I'm not so much into that um, as I am the other two. Um, and though the, the stuff that I do mention, um, um, that's the stuff that I tend to be have a little bit more interest in. And so that's the reason why I mentioned that. But many of the things that I have in my presentation are because of people asking about those. And so, or I find new information um, about those topics. I just keep adding to it and keep adding it to it. And so pretty much what I have now as far as presentations in my um, 
on my YouTube channel. I'm just going to keep adding to it. <laughs> it's enough to keep me busy just by the, just by myself by itself. And um, it's like Dr. Walt Brown when he wrote his book in the beginning. He spent pretty much his whole career and life um, just editing that book and um, and adding to it and correcting things and and stuff like that. And so that's good. That's good, and so you know you got yourself a little encyclopedia, all different types of things um, on my channel, and then of course um, get in touch with Standing for Truth and Raw Matt. Look at there, boy, they going deep and stay down long on a lot of things. Um, I'm gonna have some links below um, for you guys to check out, like Creation Research Society, um, Creation.com, Answers in Genesis, and so please check out those things if you guys want to learn more. Um, but in a nutshell, you know, this is it. I says I'm this is gonna be my final thing with logical atheist. Um and so, you know, again, as you're seeing on the screen here, you got the broad way, you got the narrow way. And so if you wanna fly with the multitude and um and just because everybody else says we're wrong, if you wanna go that way, well you can see where it's gonna end up taking you. If you want to go the narrow way, and it's not always going to be a smooth ride, it's going to be windy, turbulent, um, there's going to be stuff in the road, it's going to be hills, there's going to be valleys, um, there's going to be all types of stuff, bad weather, um, you know, it's it's not it's not a smooth walk, being a Christian, I will say that, I will say that, it's not like these um, prosperity teachers on TV, um, when you become a Christian, you will go against everything in the world and sometimes you go without you go without money sometimes you go without um friends you know i mean you lose a lot of friends your acquaintances um aren't who they think they are who you think they are when you start walking with the lord um and so you know it's just the way it is i think i've got a very good life i'm very fortunate and um i'm blessed in so many ways but I would rather be blessed in the Word of God than anything else, material things or what have you. I would much rather be blessed with my knowledge in the Word of God being able to help somebody than financial gain, material gain, or anything like that because that's not going to mean anything in the end. And so, uh, but I hope you guys, I hope, I hope this, these videos have helped you. Um, I'm not saying I'm a, a pro at all this. Um, but again, if I can help somebody, it's, it's been worth every, every minute of it. Okay. You guys take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.